Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to Gale FFTCG. I'm Sarah, your host, and today we're going to be looking at commons only, earth water control. The commons only format has only been around for the last couple of months, and I have been enchanted by the deck building and just the new pool of cards. I'm even working on a commons only cube that um, I'll maybe talk about in a later video. But the format was one of the side events for the um, Cardiff Winter Cup. It was a super fun time. Um, the team event was a lot of fun. I didn't even get that far in the team event, but I just had a blast. It was a good time. And yeah, this format has been really nice to play in the downtime between competitive seasons. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the list. So this list is based around the Earth Water Monsters list that existed prior to Opus 21. The list was super consistent, and I, um, even though I gave it a try, I didn't find it super fascinating as some of the other players did. I, I still think the list is a great list. It just wasn't my speed. So I looked around and went, huh, is there any ways that I can make this better? Is there anything that I think that could be overlooked that's maybe um, I'm not seeing that could improve the list? And I came to the conclusion that what this list needed was some more um, control aspects and some more ways of ensuring that we could not only recur, but make sure that our opponent's board was also very clear. Um, we don't have any board wipes in this, but we still have a lot of ways of dealing with that removal. Harkening a little bit back to my love of Doga Sophie in the past. The three main cards are Garnet, Mira, and Ceramobius. Um, Garnet being a 3 CP Earth Water Forward with 8k, Warp 2. And she's also a summoner, which is relevant in this deck, but we'll get to that later. Um, when Garnet enters the field, we choose one summon in our break zone, and we add it to our hand. When Garnet enters the field due to warp, we choose one summon in our break zone and add it to our hand. Um, a bit of advice, <clears throat> do not warp this on turn one, because if you are going first, you'll be effectively losing three cards out of your hand on turn one. Um, for little to no value, you're not getting any sort of board or anything. If you have to play Garnet on turn one, you are better off playing it by pitching two cards, one of them being a summon, then getting the summon back in a hand. It's still a 2 CP 8k, um, but you are effectively at least getting something back for it. Um, if you want to, um, the best way to play it in the early game is to play it off of a turn one backup into turn two Garnet, where you pitch a summon and you get it back, and it's effectively a 1 CP 8k. The card is just very strong in the mid to late game, especially, because we're getting back a lot more. If you can warp it off of two backups, you're actually doing pretty well. It means you have follow-up plays for the turns that maybe you took a turn off to just get in a couple points of damage, didn't want to use CP. You can play Garnet in main two, and then you can set up to get better summons and removal as the game goes on. Up next, we have Ceramobius. Um, choose one um, forward you control and one forward opponent controls. Um, you can um, have them fight each other, or you can draw a card. Being 2 CP Earth Water forward with 5k, this can remove a l quite a lot of the typical um, aggro decks in the format where they're just playing Vikings and they just put down four bodies that are all like 2k or 1k. Um, this can choose any forward, so we can choose Garnet, and there's a couple of other forwards in here that we can use to snipe bigger things um, without losing them um and most of that is thanks to mira um which is a one cp ex burst when mira enters the field you reveal the top five cards of your deck you add one monster from among them to your hand and return the cards to the bottom that you didn't pick basically uh put mira into the break zone you choose a monster it gains this character cannot be broken until end of turn this card will basically always give you extra. And since we have so many ways of recurring it, sacrificing it 
is sometimes more of an upside than it is a downside, especially when we're trying to keep our monsters alive. Up next, we have a bit of a protection suite. We're running six ways of countering summons. Um, this set, or this particular meta, has objectively the most heavy um, summon removal packages I have seen in a long time. Currently, standard is about getting in and dealing point a lot of points of damage very quickly, so there's not really a lot of room for removal um, in that way. Um, it's just kind of, I need to play my stuff faster than you, and if my stuff happens to have on attack removal, then great. But most people are not running summon removal. However, in the commons only meta, there are a lot more summons. Uh, I think Steve D said that the summon removal, and in fact the removal in general, is better in commons only because there's actually room to play those removal cards. So... Lael and Summoner do all the same thing. They can crack themselves to choose summons and cancel them. Um, Lael is summons of cost 4 or less, and Summoner is cost 3 or less. The premium summon currently for board wipes in the commons only format is Salamander. That may change, but for the time being, it's that card. Being able to counter those at all is really strong. Lael can also hit things of 4 cost, things like the... 4CP um, Cactuar, which we are also running in this list. Um, and last but certainly not least, when Vinyl enters the field, choose one card in your opponent's break zone, remove it from the game. Very strong. Graveyard Hate is at a all-time low in this. We're not running Mist Dragons because we can't. Um, so being able to have a little bit of Graveyard Hate is quite good, um, especially because Recursion is a lot more common in this format. Um, you can tap and choose a summon as well. If your opponent doesn't pay two, you get to cancel its effect. It's very strong to be able to hold this up as a threat and say, is it worth paying five CP to wipe my board? Being able to stop these big blowout turns that would normally keep other decks down um, is a massive benefit. And also not having to sacrifice Vanille is very strong. I think this card should definitely see a little bit more play. Up next, we have our draw packages. Um, there's quite a number of draw um, engines in this deck, um, and a lot of them are very easily searchable or recurrable, so that makes it even better. We've got our monsters, Blue Worm and Tonberry, who both say when they enter the field, you get to draw cards. Um, for zero, you can um, have Blue Worm become a 6k forward, and at the end of turn, you break Blue Worm. If you break Mira um, to st this doesn't work so you can sack it and the end of turn break doesn't happen because it can't be broken that's kind of cool um tonberry also draws a card but also you can discard a card to animate it and make it become 2k and as a forward and then when tonberry deals damage to a forward you can break it so what you do is you can sack mira to make this unbreakable when and, and, and you can discard a card to animate it, then Ceremobius enters the field, and Tonberry can kill anything that's really big. Maybe you want to hit a 6 CP Garland or something like that, something that you normally wouldn't be able to trade up with with the power that's currently on your board. So Tonberry is a cool kill spell, too. Um, sometimes it is just a free swing because it doesn't die at the end of turn, so maybe your opponent has something they don't want to lose. You swing with Tonberry, and it's never really favorable to block because you've already got you've already drawn a card off of it and anything that does block with it just immediately dies so that's kind of strong we also have 1cp suzuhisa um 1cp 1k uh when your opponent's auto ability triggers you can put it in the bin and then you can draw two um this is really strong especially with a recursion package you'll see this a couple times a game it's really good if you play this in a backup turn one and your opponent maybe aggro's out something really quick or plays a backup and then doesn't that doesn't have an auto ability you can just swing in for suzuhisa for one it deals a point of damage but if your opponent gets aggressive you can still sack it and draw two either way it's really good as an early play and we have ways of bringing it back so hopefully we'll see it at least a couple times a game 
we're running Moogle and Poo Poo as well because drawing and discarding cards is always going to be good. It will give us a lot of setup and a lot of options in our break zone for what we want to do. Um, Poo Poo is discard a card, then draw two. If you do this on an empty hand where Poo Poo is your only card, you cast it, then you just draw two because you have nothing to discard. That's very strong. And Moogle is still really good. Drawing two cards, having a card selection, then discarding one is always going to be quite good as well. And then onto our recursion suite, um, we have Blue Mage, which is a 4 CP 7K water forward that if we control a monster, Blue Mage gains plus 1K. When Blue Mage enters the field, choose one monster in your break zone, add it to your hand. We also have Zombie, um, which is a 2 CP monster. When it enters the field, you choose a forward of cost one in your break zone, add it to hand. So this can get us our Miras, this can get us back Suzuhisa. Um, one of the cool things that you can do is with the Zombie trigger on the stack when it enters, you can go ahead and sacrifice a Mira in response, and then you can basically um, check to see if there is a one cost in your bin. If there's not, you can take the Mira back into your hand and then potentially extend your plays even further. That is a very cool line of play that you can do. It also becomes a monster or a forward for zero that's 6k and you can break it um, at the end of turn. Very good card. Um, probably one of the ones you actually want to see off of Mira um, early on. And also, if you have a Susie, he's in the bin. It's also very good for that. We're running the four-cost summoner. When it enters the field, you choose a summon in your break zone, add it to hand. Very simple. Um, we're running Kusith, 2 CPE X burst, Earth summon. Choose a forward or backup in your break zone, add it to your hand. It's at two of in this list because we're running so much recursion, you really don't need any more than two. Um, it is, it's also part of a loop that I'll talk about in a minute. And last but certainly not least, we're running just one copy of Hilda, 4 CP water backup. It's got an EX burst that draws a card when it enters field, and on damage 5, when Hilda enters the field, we choose one forward of cost 3 or less in our break zone, play it onto the field. If our opponent gets really aggressive, this could be a really good way of bringing back a Garnet that can just get us a summon back. Maybe it's removal, maybe it's protection, who knows. But... Either way, it's quite good, and we also have ways of dealing damage to ourselves in this deck. Though we don't, that's not always the goal. It can be helpful to get how ha just have a way of recurring something extra. And our removal suite. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the entire deck. Uh, we have Cactuar, who just breaks a forward for four CP and. Deals you a point of damage in this deck most of the time. If the cost cast to cast Cactuar is paid with CP of two or less different elements. So basically if you didn't pay three, then it deals you the point of damage. So it will always deal us a point of damage in this deck. That's fine. It's a way of fueling Hilda. But be careful as in the late game this card becomes significantly worse than it does in the early game. 2CP Cryo. This card fascinates me. I love this card so much. I am convinced that maybe it's even worth doing mono earth deck techs and things around this card i just love this card so much but um when cryo enters the field you can discard a summon and when you do so you choose a forward and deal 8k this was one of the cards that made me go huh i wonder if our summon package is good enough to make this work um aside from being a removal spell on a backup um you can play this really early and maybe stop an aggressive start from your opponent Maybe they're playing a mirror match, and they also have a Garnet. You can kill the Garnet very quickly, um, if needs must. You can also pay two Earth to crack it and put Krylon into the break zone. Choose a summon in your hand, add it, or in your break zone, and add it into your hand. So with the summon recursion, if we have a Kusith in bin, we can get it back in hand, um, and then cast it, get back Krylon, play Krylon again, discard another summon deal 8k and we can kind of loop this over and over and over um on our turns and kind of soft lock down our opponent's board it is a slow combo but in commons only where going fast isn't always the necessarily the best way forward at the moment um this can actually you can actually pull this off this is one of the new cards from opus 21 and i think it has a bright future in the format and last but certainly not least kukulin 
It's a 1 CP EX burst, choose a forward, it loses all abilities till end of turn, draw a card. This just shuts off any on attack, triggers anything that maybe our opponent um, has a lot of activated abilities and that sort of thing. Maybe we can just shut off something to force a response out of them and we're still drawing a card anyway. Um, it's just a very good card. Now for a few other notable protection cards. We're running two of the three CP Leviathan because it's effectively Amate Rasu. Um, it chooses one auto ability that's triggered from a forward and you just cancel the effect straight up. It's very strong. When you cast Leviathan, you can remove 10 water cards from your break zone as an extra cost and bounce something. It's not going to happen very often, but if it does, then that's better for us. Um, the main card here that I found that was really interesting is Kamari. 5 CP Earth Forward 8K. You can pay 0 and choose one forward you control other than Kamari. During this turn, the next damage dealt to it is dealt to Kamari instead. You can only use this ability once per turn, but that's on your opponent's turn and your turn, so you can get a lot of value out of that. You can also discard an Earth card. During your turn, the next damage dealt to Kamari is reduced by 4K instead. So what's really cool is you can play this in conjunction with Ceramobius, you can stop, you know, board wipes with this card by diverting damage away from something you want to keep around to Kamari, and then you can lessen that. There's a, Kamari is just very hard to kill, and it, but it also makes things on your board also very hard to kill. Um, Zeeing as Salamander, even with its extra cost paid, dealing 7k across the board, um, is still not enough to kill Kamari. Um, and if Kamari does want to redirect the damage off of something else, you can still just discard an Earth card to make that work. It's really exceptionally hard to get rid of. And last but certainly not least are just a few outlying cards. We have Ico. Um, when it searches the field, we can search for a job summoner forward. There's only one, but it's still a very good one. Obviously, that's Garnet. It's an EX burst that just gets us a Garnet, so we can even play this as our turn one, go and search for Garnet, then get ready to play Garnet on turn two off of Ico, and then we're having that one CP Garnet in our in our kind of opening hand, if you will. Um, and Beastmaster, which is effectively a Mira clone, 3 CP, 7k Earth forward. When it enters the field, you reveal the top five cards of your deck and add one monster from among them into your hand and then put the rest on the bottom. Um... Very strong card. It is effectively Mira without the extra candy, and it's not an EX burst, but it's still a 7k, so it's one of the more powerful forwards in terms of its actual power. Well, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The deck list is in the description below, and I hope you have a great day and a great rest of your week.